This is the world's oldest steam engine. I'm Darren, and this is the Industrial Revolution. What you're looking at is a Newcomen atmospheric engine. Originally, it was referred to just as a Newcomen engine or a Newcomen fire engine. It was built sometime in the 1750s, early 1760s, and it was used to pump water from a mine. So this isn't actually the first Newcomen atmospheric engine. That came in 1712. And even that wasn't the first ever steam engine. The first, it was just the first ever workable steam engine. Uh, back in 1712, it was installed at, at the Connigree Coal Works in Tipton in England, central England, an area called the Black Country. Got that name because of all the smoke and soot from the coal mines and iron works. So, while not the first, this is the oldest known surviving steam engine. And like a lot of steam engines, it had a name. This one's name was Fairbottom Bobs. It was installed at the channel mine in the Lancashire Coalfields near Ashton under Lye in England. When it was uh, purchased by Henry Ford, it did not have a haystack boiler on it, although it certainly did at the beginning. Uh, at that point, it was identified as having had a boiler that was probably installed sometime in the mid-1800s. Now, since this was installed in the mid-1700s, that means that this engine ran for at least 100 years, and at about 100 years old, they thought it still had enough life in it that they'd actually go ahead and replace the boiler. So this is the part of the Newcomen engine that actually made people buy them. Uh, this is the pump side of the engine. Uh, they ran slow, they ran about 12 to 14 uh, cycles per minute. Uh, ran at low pressure steam, only about five PSI. Uh, and they are atmospheric engines. And what that means is that the steam pressure doesn't actually pump the water. What the steam does is it provides a little bit of extra force needed to push the pump shaft down into the well, into the mine. And then you condense the steam and that's what actually creates the force to pump. If we look down here into the, the pump shaft, we see it's a much smaller diameter than the steam, steam cylinder. And that's required. Uh, optimistically, with perfect seals, with perfect valves, you might get 35 gallons per stroke from this. Uh, at 14 to 16 uh, RPM, you might pull four to 500 gallons a minute. Now, that is a lot of water by any standard. But pulling four to 500 gallons a minute from a mine meant your mines could go far deeper and you could keep them around far longer. Now before this, they also had to run uh, pumps in mines, and those were often run by horses. Uh, you'd have horse-powered pumps operated by something called a, a horse mill, uh, which would either turn big wheels or bucket chains. Uh, it's estimated that one of the early Newcomen engines when it was installed actually replaced as many as 500 horses that operated the pumps in that mine. So early Newcomen engines didn't actually look like this exactly. Uh, instead of having a separate boiler, uh, the main cylinder was actually located directly on top of the boiler with a valve between the boiler and the cylinder and that would open to both let steam in and let the, cond the condensed water back out. This kind of limited your size to some degree, obviously. Uh, it also uh, meant that your operator, uh, the plug man, 
uh, pretty much had to be working right up on top of the boiler the whole time. Originally, the first Newcomen engines were fully manual. Uh, the valves were operated each stroke manually by the plug man. Uh, the plug was the term for the valve. So early Newcomen engines had, had some problems. Uh, the first one was that as you boil water, all of the dissolved gases in the water uh, come out of the water, come out of solution, and start to accumulate in the, the cylinder. And that's a problem because it uh, isn't steam. It doesn't condense down when you spray it with cold water, so you lose efficiency. Uh, this was discovered pretty quickly and resolved just as quickly by adding the snifter valve. Uh, it's a small valve at the, the very bottom of the cylinder, and when you reach the bottom of the cylinder, as you turn on the steam, you also very, very briefly open up a, a snifter valve, which lets the gases out. Another problem with them is that they were very manual. Uh, you originally had a person standing on a platform above the boiler, uh, actually operating the levers to open and close all the valves. Fortunately, this part was resolved. It was resolved with this rod here. Uh, th this is called a plug tree, and it automatically opened and closed the valves once you got it started. It was a little bit of work to get it started. So once the plug tree was installed, operating off the same lever as the pump, at that point, you no longer had to have somebody manually standing here opening and closing every single lever every single time. Uh, you just had to get it started and then it could take care of itself. The third problem Newcomen never resolved, and that's that after you put steam into the cylinder enough times, eventually it heats up. And it heats up enough that when you spray the cold water in to condense the steam out, it doesn't. You condense it, the water touches the metal cylinder, and immediately flashes back to steam. And you lose efficiency. You have to shut it down, let things cool off some before you can restart it. Uh, that wasn't resolved until James Watt came along, and, and that's an entirely different story. So how does this thing actually work? Well, the principle is pretty simple. Uh, you put compressed steam into the bottom of the cylinder, pushing the piston up. Steam comes in at about five PSI. Atmospheric pressure is typically a little less than 15 PSI. So you're, you're adding five PSI to the bottom, that pushes the cylinder up. Uh, when it reaches the top, you close the steam valve, you very briefly hit it with a jet of cold water inside the cylinder. Uh, that hits the steam, causes the steam to condense. That creates a partial vacuum inside the cylinder. You still have full atmospheric pressure outside. That pushes the cylinder down. The cylinder comes down hard, and that causes the pump to pump water out of the mine. All these linkages are here just to do exactly that. So right now the pump shaft is in the down position. You see the cylinder is fully expanded the pistons all the way at the top. Uh, when the pump is down, uh, that's called out of, how, out of the house. Uh, well, you need to get it back in the house. So to do that, uh, you need to condense the, the pressure. That's the steam. So you condense the steam by putting the jet of water into it. That causes the piston to come down. Uh, when it comes down far enough, it's then going to trip this valve, this lever here, with that peg. Now that's at the very bottom, and that causes the steam valve to open up and fill the, fill the cylinder up again with steam. Pushes it back up to the top. Now it reaches the top where it is now. On the other side, you see there's another lever and another uh, disc there that will hit it. Uh, that rotates a shaft, which both turns off the steam through a, a linkage over here releases the catch here and simultaneously that's what injects the jet of water. 
So here's the water injection mechanism. It goes down from here and injects water. And actually, it also seems to operate the snifter valve when tripped in the opposite direction. At one end, it hits you with a brief jet of water to cause the condensation, and the other end opens the valve, which in this case drains not only uh, the dissolved gases out, but also the water out. And that goes all the way down to the bottom here, where it gets pushed out and disposed of. So just how efficient were these engines? Well, not very, to tell you the truth. Uh, compared to anything today, they're not that impressive. But compared to what existed at the time, remember you replaced hundreds of horses with just one of, of these. And they were efficient enough that they stayed in service for a long, long time. Uh, when Henry Ford went to retrieve this from England in 1931, uh, it, it did not, in fact, have the haystack boiler on it. It had a newer boiler design on it. And the boiler it had was, in fact, from the mid-1800s, based on its engineering. So the steam engine itself is from the mid-1700s. So they not only operated this for 100 years, 100 years after, after it was first put in use, they figured they had enough use out of it still, they replaced the boiler and kept using it. Uh, it was picked up in England in uh, 1931 and moved here to Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan, where everyone can get up close and, and see this and figure out how it works today. It's a great museum if you're ever in the area. I recommend you come visit. And as for the atmospheric engine, you'll never see one in operation today. You'll never see the haystack boilers in operation today. Uh, they, they just weren't really efficient. They were not good for fuel, um, but compared to what existed, they were great. And this led on to the Watt steam engine, which fixed uh, some problems and led to high pressure steam engines, which fixed a lot more problems. But this was the first, and that's why this is the Industrial Revolution.